form a bond and a partnership with the horse from the mare, teaching her foal. You can see here this one minute old foal has not so far even noticed mom. She's struggling just to get out of the sack. There's very little contact and very little communication that occurs initially between the mare and the foal. It looks as if they're just sort of sharing their apartment at the moment. The mare does reach out to clean a little bit. She's also recovering from the birth and the labor process. Unlike us humans, there is not automatic recognition between these two. The mare does create the bond and begin instructing the foal once she's up and on her feet. This usually occurs within about a 20 to 30 minute time frame. It's crucial that we stay out of the way while this bonding occurs. This is the mare's fifth foal, and so she's well experienced in motherhood. She circles the foal and begins her bonding. She starts stimulating and cleaning. You notice, still, it's not appropriate for that foal to have nose-to-nose -nose contact, and she's told so by the mom. Notice that the mare is behaving as if this was just some foreign object in her stall. She licks, cleans, and stimulates. The recognition between the mare and the foal is based on the placenta, the amniotic sac, and the fluids. Here you see her sucking on the amniotic sac remnants. This is a part of the recognition. It's very important to recognize these steps in the bonding mechanism between mare and foal, especially if you're a breeder yourself. I made the mistake once of removing a placenta about an hour after delivery to get it out of the way, and the mare became frantic thinking that I was removing the baby. That recognition by scent is extremely, extremely important. And so it's most important that we humans stay out of the way unless it's necessary for us to intervene. The mare continues licking, cleaning, and stimulating until the foal gets on her feet. Shoo! She's up, a little wobbly and a little stretched out, but she made it to her feet. Mom continues licking her back legs, licking her back end, helping to stimulate her to keep her going and get her more upright. It took less than 20 minutes from birth to this moment of being on her feet. And now the real teaching begins. Although the foal is still very wobbly, mom begins pushing her around and getting her actually moving better and using those long legs. She reminds her again, no nose to nose contact. It's not allowed. You now see the baby beginning to notice who mom is. All of this licking and nipping and pushing around. She's starting to actually look at mom and mostly it's because she's getting the scent of milk and she's starting to get hungry.
all of her instincts are well intact. She's just not quite sure where you find the milk. Her tongue is going, she's sucking, but only sucking air. She's not too sure exactly where she's going to get that milk from. So here's the teachings about how far that foal can be away from mom. As soon as she wanders away, you notice that mom closes the space and makes sure that the foal stays right with her. Here's the frustrating part for us humans. We're waiting for this baby to begin nursing and be able to find the milk supply. Mom pushes her around and then as soon as the baby gets anywhere near the udder, the mare repositions and swings her butt away. Now, some people intervene at this point to help out or speed up the process. You notice the mare keeps swinging away. I used to think this was just that mares were having contractions and in pain, so they didn't want to have the baby nurse right then. But here, just as the baby begins the approach, getting underneath, even though it's the elbow, um, all of a sudden the mare moves away. After foaling out, oh, I don't even know how many mares at this point, a very large number, every mare does the same thing. My belief is that this is how they teach this foal to follow and to keep their space. They do have purpose in those movements. This is a well-experienced mare. She's more than willing to nurse her foal. She's never had an issue with that. So there is purpose in what she's doing. Here she's telling the foal, no nose-to-nose -nose contact. Stay back. The circling continues. And very soon, the foal is starting to run to catch up with mom. This makes sense if this was living in the wild. The first priority for this baby has got to be able to run and stay with mom for safety. Second is your appetite. So here mom has decided, okay, you can try to nurse now. Baby is up underneath trying to find the udder, but the mare has come to a decision that it's okay for her to eat now. So here they are six hours later out of the stall into the morning sunshine. After a long night of teaching and eating and resting, this foal is on her feet and already knows the space to stay with mom. She stays at her shoulder this is the partnership position. Every horse knows this as long as they had a mother and weren't an orphan foal. So in this case, if we mimic what the mare does to instruct her foal, then we can also form the same type of a partnership and have our horse stay right at our shoulder at all times. Speed up, slow down, and stop based totally on our body language. When you create the same bond and partnership with your horse, then he will keep space, he'll go as fast as you are, or as slow at whatever space you tell him to go. He reads your body language. You also don't even really need a lead line once you've established that relationship. 